chair recognized Professor Blakey. Early in 1978, the committee convened a panel of experts with varied backgrounds in the photographic sciences to study all photographic evidence related to the assassination. The panel's expertise included analog photographic enhancement, digital image processing, photogrammetry, photo interpretation, and forensic photography. Resolving the various controversies surrounding the backyard photographs was a prime objective. Because the quantity of material to be examined was large, the technical projects were contracted to several laboratories. The photo-optical analog enhancement work was done by a team of professors at the Rochester Institute of Technology. The image processing work was done by the University of Southern California Image Processing Institute, the University of California Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, and the Aerospace Corporation. The photographic panel met with representatives of the laboratories in February 1978. The analytical work began in March and proceeded, subject to the panel's review until mid-July. The most advanced technology available to the committee was applied to the photographic evidence. In addition to the original negative and first-generation prints examined by the Warren Commission, the panel examined the first-generation prints obtained from Dees, DeMorenshiel, and Stovall. The additional prints allowed a more comprehensive investigation than that of the Warren Commission. Two representatives of the photographic panel are here today to present the panel's findings. Mr. Calvin S. McCamey, whom the committee has heard from previously, and Sergeant Cecil W. Kirk. Sergeant Kirk has served 17 years with identification branch of the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. He supervises the branch mobile crime laboratory and the photographic services unit, which produces about 3,000, about 30,000 forensic photographs per month, in which I should note, Mr. Chairman, has been extremely helpful to this committee in producing photographs in connection uh, with our hearings. Mr. McCamey received his B.S. degree in chemical engineering and an M.S. degree in physics from the University of Minnesota. He has, of course, already testified before the committee. Mr. Chairman, it would be appropriate at this time to call Mr. McCamey and Sergeant Kirk. The committee calls both of these gentlemen at this time. The witnesses are right approaching the witness stand, and they're being sworn now by Chairman Stokes. The, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, or else you die. Thank you. You may be seated. Chair recognizes uh, Counsel Mr. Kinsman. Mr. Chairman, I believe that I'm going to be handling the questioning this afternoon. Thank you. Sergeant Kirk, would you state for what purpose the committee's photographic evidence panel was asked to examine the backyard pictures showing Lee Harvey Oswald and the rifle? To make a determination whether the photographs were authentic or fakes. I would like to refer your attention now to what has been marked as Committee Exhibit Number 178, the flow chart on the right. And I would like to ask you how many different backyard pictures showing Oswald with the rifle was the panel given to examine? We examined the original 133 A and B and 133 negative, which were examined by the Warren Commission. In addition, we examined four additional photographs that were recovered by investigators from this committee. Would you step up to that chart and point to the other photographs that were investigated by the panel? Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of this item. Without objection, it may be entered to the record. These are the two photographs that were turned over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation 
by the Dallas Police Department as a result of the execution of the search warrant on the Payne residence. And in addition, they also turned over to the FBI this photographic negative. And these are the three elements that were examined by the Warren Commission. In addition, the photographic panel also was asked to examine 133A Des Moines shelf, which was recovered by committee investigators of the deceased estate of Mr. Des Moines shelf. Also, it was requested to examine 133 CDs, which has been established to be uh, from a deceased Dallas police officer, and also was asked to examine 133A Stovall and 133C Stovall that was turned over to the committee of investigators by retired officer Stovall who executed the search warrant on the paid resident. Thank you. Sergeant Kirk, who remain up there for the moment, to what extent, if any, Before I, before I ask you the question I was going to ask you, are all the materials represented in that flow chart either original negatives or first generation prints? The camera panel established that 133B negative is original camera negative material, and all the other photographs on this chart are first generation prints. And to what extent, if any, did the, did the panel base its analysis upon materials that were not original negatives or first generation prints? The uh, panel agreed that they would only examine first-generation prints and original camera negative material. What was the reason for the panel taking this approach? Uh, when you move away from first-generation material, you lose in tonal quality. You are likely to pick up artifacts in the copying material. You will lose detail in the, in the highlights. You will lose detail in the shadows. What do you mean by, ton <clears throat> by tonal quality, sir? Tonal quality is the full scale that the photographic film is able to give you in a photograph. If you copy a photograph, you will lose some of that scale. Referring to that flow chart, can you explain why these pictures are not all the same size? They were produced by different means, mechanical means. Is there anything unusual about the differences in size? No. Thank you. Would you res resume your seat at this point? And I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be given to examine the original negative to 133B and Warren Commission Exhibit 133A and B. The committee clerk, Elizabeth Burning, is going over to the uh, gentleman who's here from the archives and taking the exhibits over to Sergeant Kirk. Sergeant Kirk, would you please identify the items that, that have just been given to you? These are from the National Archives, and they, they are the original photographs that have been identified in the Warren Commission report as 133A and 133B. And this is the photographic negative from the archives that's identified as the negative that produced 133B. And to your knowledge, are these materials available for anyone to examine? It's my understanding that anyone who wants to walk into the archives and has its proper identification can examine them, yes, sir. I would ask at this time that what is been marked as JFK F-179 and F-182 be shown to the witness. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of F-182. Thank you. Sergeant Kirk, would you identify these two exhibits? Yes, sir. They're true and accurate reproductions of the front and reverse side of Commission Exhibit 133A and B. Now, you indicated earlier that the differences in size in these photographs, as they are depicted in the flowchart, is attributable to the manner in which they were produced. In your opinion, would you tell us now how Warren Commission Exhibits 133A and B were produced? Yes, sir. It was, uh, these were referred to in the panel as the drugstore prints. Uh, it was determined that they most likely were produced on a commercial printer, the type that you would find in 
processing houses that do printing for camera stores and drug stores and so forth. Uh, the masking uh, is on the front, even though it looks square, it's the 32nd of an inch off. In the top left-hand corner, you can see with the convertible mask on the automatic printer has come together. On the reverse side of the photographs, on the left-hand side, as you see them, and there's a little graphite mark, almost obscured by the initials of someone who's uh, written their initials and date on it. Mrs. Downey, would you please take the pointer and refer to that graphite mark? Sergeant Kirk, would you, there you draw are. that to our attention? Yes. That graphite mark is placed on the automatic printer and it's used as a signal for the automatic cutter. When the roll of paper is processed, the automatic cutter has an electric eye that picks up the signal and tells it when they cut the roll of paper up into snapshots. Now, examining these two prints, are you able to state whether these prints have been cropped in any way? Yes, sir, I can. And have they been? Yes, they have. Would you state your opinion as to in what way these prints have been cropped and for what purpose? Well, uh, in that time of day or time of year or that year, people preferred white borders on their photographs. And the cropping or masking is done in the printing process at the processing house to create a white border around the uh, photograph. Uh, so the mask is somewhat smaller than the actual image size of the negative. Thus, the cropping takes place, but it's for aesthetic purposes only. Now, you made reference to the negative. Is the negative that is in front of you now, is there any indication as to whether or not that negative was properly processed? Yes, sir. The panel found that the negative had been abused during the processing. In other words, it was not properly processed. No, sir, it was not. Would you indicate to what extent it had been abused? Uh, initially, there are emulsion tears, and if I could, I'd define emulsion for you. Please do. The emulsion is the uh, substance of the photograph that contains the light-sensitive grains of silver that are suspended in a gelatin base. And when the, photo when the negative is being processed, it becomes wet, it becomes very sensitive to touch, very soft. And we have on this negative, torn emulsion. Also, there are probably some uh, other artifacts that were in, in a, entered onto the negative that was processed probably by hand or at least in something that was not designed to process film of this size. Also, there are indications that the negative has not been washed properly as there are water spots on the, on the negative surface itself. Thank you, Sergeant Kirk. Now, according to the record, are these materials before you all the materials that the Warren Commission evaluated when the authenticity of the backyard pictures was examined? Yes, it is. This time I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be given JFK exhibits F380 and F390. For the record, those are the copies of 133C, Dees, and Stovall. This is a, a first generation print of the photograph that is identified as 133C, which was recovered from uh, Mrs. Gene Geneva Dees, who is the widow of deceased Dallas Police Officer Roscoe White. You're referring now to JFK number F380? 380. WFCR Amherst. Would you not examine JFK F390? Is that before you? I don't know. Uh, still wrong. Yes. No, the other one. Would you identify that? I don't have it yet, sir. I guess we'll wait for you to get it. Okay, this is, uh, this is identified as JFK, JFK F190. It is also a first generation print from 133C. This was recovered by committee investigators on 41478 
from retired Dallas police officer Richard Stovall. Now you say both of these first generation prints were obtained by the committee from either Dallas police officers or a member of a family of a former Dallas police officer. That's correct. Would the witness now be shown what's been marked as JFK F-180? <clears throat> Sergeant Kirk, would you identify that exhibit, please? Yes, sir. It's an enlargement from 133C Stovall, identified as JFK-190. Mr. Chairman, I move that JFK F-180 be admitted into the record. Without objection, may be entered into the record. These are Sergeant all Kirk, I would ask you at this time to, to explain how these the two prints, the 133C prints, were produced. Pistol on one hip. Well, sir, we, uh, some through of close of uh, analysis of the two photographs, were able to establish that they were first-generation prints. The negative that produced these prints suffered the same abuse as 133B negative, in that we have emulsion tears and artifacts on the film plane itself, other than within the image. And they are considerably sharp, sharper than the image itself. Also, there are other artifacts within the photograph that the panel believes suggest that they're first generation prints. Have these prints been cropped? Yes, sir. Are you able to state in what way and for what purpose these prints have been cropped? Well, the negatives are square and we have rectangular photographs. Uh, to make a full enlarged enlargement from the two and a quarter square negative, this should have been an eight by eight photograph. Since we have an eight by ten, we do have cropping. Are you able to state whether, whether the white border, which is an indication that the photograph has been cropped, was intended to serve an aesthetic purpose. It looks as though the print was put into a conventional 8 by 10 print easel. And since the easel was smaller than an 8 by 10 image, it aesthetically would create a white border. Now, according to the, rec according to the record, was this print, or either one of these prints, ever pr provided to the Warren Commission? No, they were not. What about the original negative? Was that provided to the Warren Commission? No, it was not. Has it been provided to this committee? No, it has not. Do you know where the negative is today, Sergeant Kirk? No, sir, I do not. Sergeant Kirk, is your testimony that in your opinion, these prints, which we've designated as 133C, which were in the possession of former Dallas Police Department personnel, were made from the, from the original negative? Yes, sir. This time I would ask that the witness be given JFK 183 and 184 to examine. The witness has been given a copy of the, or the exhibit itself by Elizabeth Burning, the clerk of this committee. Sergeant Kirk, would you identify that item? It's not identified by number, but is the original photograph identified as 133A de Mornshell. And I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be given a chance to see what's been marked as JFK 382 and 383. Now two exhibits are being put up on the uh, easel. One of them looks like. Did you identify these two items? Russian writing. Sure, that's a representation of uh, back of the photograph, and the other is another one of these Oswalds with guns. The left is the front or the image side, and the other photograph on the right is the reverse side of that photograph. In your opinion, Sergeant Kirk, how was this print produced? This photograph is a contradiction. It's a contradiction in, in the fact that. Uh, a good quality and larger with good optics was used. The person who printed the photograph uh, knew what they were doing when they exposed the paper, made the enlargement. The contradiction comes in because it is turned yellow. 
And on the reverse side, almost in the center of the photograph, is a big blob that you see here, but on the original are yellow stains. Now this isn't indicative that the, probably the photograph was exposed or enlarged from a negative by someone who knows or knew what they were doing. But yet the person who was given the task of washing the print either didn't follow instructions or was never instructed on how to wash the print properly because the type of paper that was used back in those days had fibers in it and the chemistry and water minerals adhered to the fibers and it required an excessive long time of washing. And the print was not washed properly. Once it was dry, it had a tendency for the chemical residue that was left in the paper to turn yellow. Now, has this print been cropped in any way? No, sir, it has not. How are you able to, to make that determination? I'll have to uh, walk over to you. Please do. Sergeant Kirk is walking over to the easel and picking up the pointer to show us why he thinks this particular photograph was not cropped. This committee the negative. heard testimony earlier today saying that this was probably a full negative print as indicated by the black border. And the panel agrees with that testimony. Normal printing would give you the aesthetic white border that you would have a normal enlarging. A common negative carrier that is used for this type of printing would be used to hold a negative. And this would do some of the cropping that we talked about. Now, if the photo lab that uh, was handling this negative, or the person who was using the photo lab to make a print, did not normally use this size negative, they would have to seek out a negative carry that would allow the negative to lay flat. This is the type of negative carry that you would find in a graphic arts uh, shop or a printing shop that had to do a lot of line negatives. And since it is glass, It would allow you to lay a negative or a strip of negatives into the negative carrier to hold it flat, which would allow you, but would cause you, unless you cropped it by moving a mask around a paper. Again, this would probably indicate that the photo lab that was processed in did not have a paper easel small enough. So when the photograph was printed, you had the complete negative area plus a black border that was created by the unexposed part of the negative. Sergeant, is this an unusual way of producing a print? It's not unusual when you're limited in equipment. Uh, it, this, is, this technique is used to do down and dirty prints where you want picture editors, for instance, to be able to see the, the full image area so they can determine what final cropping is going to be used. It is unusual. You wouldn't find this technique in a commercial printing house, no, sir. Is the absence of cropping in and of itself unusual? Yes. And why is that? Because normally people like to have white borders, as I said, for aesthetic purposes. And unless they were forced to use a larger negative carrier because they didn't have another one, then you would have this. Or if for some reason they want to be able to see the full image area, they would use a larger negative carrier. On the record, the exhibit that the witness was testifying about. Yes, the, the witness was given F-183 and F-184, which is the original the Mornchild print, and he is now referring to an enlargement of it as well, which is JFK F-382 and JFK F-383. Thank you. Sergeant Kirk, if you remain standing, we'll give you the next exhibit actually to examine. Would Sergeant Kirk be, be given JFK F-403? Sergeant, would you examine that item and identify it? Yes, sir. Uh, this item marked as JFK F-403 is a photograph recovered from retired police officer Richard F. Stovall. It was recovered on 4 
by committee investigators, and it was identified on the flow chart as 133A Stovall. So this is the second Stovall photograph, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Mr. Chairman, I move to the admission of this exhibit. Without objection, it may be entered into the record at this point. And I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be given an opportunity to examine JFK F-185. Another exhibit is being mounted on the easel. It's another photograph of Lee Harvey Oswald with two guns. Sergeant, would you identify that exhibit? Yes, sir. This is a, a photograph enlargement. It's an actual accurate copy of 133A Stovall. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of this item. Without objection, it may be entered into the record. Would you explain how the Stovall print was produced? Yes, sir. This has some unusual artifacts on it as well that would tell you that it was made other than a normal photograph. I would draw your attention to the black circle and the black border that exists on the bottom of the photograph. Now, this is indicative of someone taking a, a sheet of 8 by 10 enlarging paper and cutting it in half into two, to two 5 by 8 inch pieces of paper. And we've established it was placed into a convertible easel known as a three-way easel. This is an aircraft four-way that was in production and used quite extensively around the country during this time in 1963. And the circle was caused by a pop rivet that holds the bumper onto this easel so that when it's used, it's used on the other side, these bumpers serve as feet. And it is clear where light is allowed to pass through. So that when the individual who wanted to make some 5 by 7s and did not have 5 by 7 paper, he or she simply took 8 by 10 paper and cut it in half. And not being in the, probably was in a hurry because they didn't bother to cut off the, the bottom part of the paper because what happened was that part of the paper is sticking out from the bottom of the easel. And this is exposed by the negative, or by the overspill from the enlarger, so that the image area of the negative, of the enlarging easel received the photograph, and there was still light hitting the entire part of the easel, so some of the light went down into the hole that could hold this foot onto this easel, created your circle, and then the overspill from the enlarger created the black border across the bottom. I inserted this piece of paper at the beginning of the day's hearings and left it under these photographic lights. And as you can see, you can see the border on the bottom of the print. If you look closely, there is a circle that was created just by the light striking the paper today. Sergeant Kirk, was this print produced from the original negative? Yes, sir, it was. In other words, it's a first generation print? Yes, sir, it is. How can you tell that? We find the same information in it that we found from the other first generation prints. The negative shows the same type of abuse, emulsion tears in it. They're sharp and well defined, and so are the scratches sharp and well defined. Is this print cropped? Yes, sir. Could you explain in what way it's been cropped? We're still dealing with a square negative, and we've got a rectangular image, so we had to have cropping somewhere. Can you tell the purpose for which it was cropped? I would suppose that someone wanted some 5 by 7s as opposed to some 5 by 5s or 7 by 7s. Now, you, you testified that this print was made from the original negative. Was that negative also used to produce the DeMornschild print that yes, you examined? Yes, it was. Has that, was that negative ever provided to the Warren Commission? No, sir, it was not. Has it been made available to the committee? No, sir, it has not. And do you know where it is today? No, sir, I do not. Your testimony then that the negative from the original negative from 133A, let me rephrase that. Your testimony then is that the print which was given to the committee by a former Dallas police officer was derived from an original negative. Yes, sir, it was. Sergeant, have you summarized at this time the materials that were reviewed by the committee's photography panel? We examined all of the photographs 
that are depicted here on this flow chart, and it is the opinion of the panel that these are all first generation photographs. And of the three first generation photographs that you examined, there were three negatives. Of those three original negatives, only one has been made available to the Warren Commission and to this committee. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. And the other two negatives were sometime, it appears, in the possession of Dallas Police Department personnel. That could be a fair assumption, yes, sir. Sergeant, have any other first generation prints been discovered? Yes, sir. And what print are you referring to now? It's identified in the Warren Commission report as Commission Exhibit 134. I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be handed Warren Commission Exhibit 134, which corresponds with JFK number F398. Kirk Elizabeth Burning. Did you identify that? Yes, this is a photograph that is presently in the custody of the National Archives, and it was reproduced in the Warren Commission report and identified as Commission Exhibit 134. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of this item. Without objection, it may be added to the record. And I will also note for the record that Warren Commission exhibits 133A and B, as well as the negative, will be introduced into the record. At this time, to my knowledge, they have not been assigned exhibit numbers. Or at least I'll ask you to admit them into the record. Sergeant Kirk, how was this particular print discovered? I just this past weekend, I was reading over some of the Warren Commission reports, and I detected a, uh, a sentence in there that, as a police officer investigator, didn't correspond to what I thought would be proper investigative techniques. In the report, it quoted Captain Fritz as saying he showed Lee Harvey Oswald one enlargement and one small photograph. And when I looked at the 134, as it was identified in the Warren Commission report, I could see that it was an enlargement of 133A. And I thought at first this might be a reason that why Mr. Oswald said that's a fake picture because as you copy photographs, it gives the illusion that they've been tampered with. And I thought, why would someone go to the trouble of copying a photograph that they had the original evidence to approach a suspect with? And I thought this kind of strange. So I asked the committee if I could go over to the archives on Monday and look at it. Commission Exhibit 134. And what did you discover when you examined that exhibit? Sorry. I looked at the photograph and formed an opinion, as it's been the policy of this panel, we seek a, a, another opinion from another member of the panel, and I repelled my conclusion until Mr. Cammy, Mr. Cammy, who was testifying that they could go over on Tuesday and examine the photograph. And after you did, we both reached the same conclusion that this 134 is a first generation print. By first generation print, again, I take it you say, or you mean that it came from the original negative? It came from the original negative, yes, sir. In your opinion, how was this print produced? It was placed in a the photograph, the photographic paper was placed in a 8 by 10 easel, and the print was produced, and it creates the aesthetic white border that you see here. So there is some cropping. Sergeant, what notation, if any, appears in the back of this print? There's, a, there's an impression from a rubber stamp that identifies this as a Dallas Police Department photograph. It is dated 11 63 And that print comes from the same original negative as the Mornchild in 133A and 133A Stovall? Yes, sir, it does. Sergeant, if, if that print is a first-generation print, which means that it came from the original negative. Are you able to state whether that original negative was ever in the possession of the Dallas Police Department personnel? This photograph is stamped Dallas Police Department photograph, and it's identified as a photograph that Captain Fritz showed to Lee Harvey Oswald. Does this photograph come from one of the negatives that has not been made available to the Warren Commission or to this committee? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you, Sergeant. After reviewing these materials, what was the next step in the panel's analysis of the backyard pictures? Uh, the panel thought it best then to examine the camera that is purported to have been used to take the backyard photograph. At this point, I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be given what has been marked as 
F381 is the Warren Commission exhibit as well, and it's, I'll ask him to identify it. Identify. Before I do, Sergeant, would you prefer to remain standing or to, to be seated? Whatever is convenient to the committee, I can work either way. Why don't you stand for now and let me know if okay. you'd like to sit down. Now, why was it necessary for you to examine the camera? Well, first of all, uh, Marina Oswald testified uh, that she took the photographs with this camera. And secondly, it was important to the panel if we could establish that this camera was used to take the photographs, it would establish the parameters as far as equipment-wise on how the photographs had to be taken, whether or not they were authentic or fake. When you were examining the camera, what was the specific purpose of examining it in terms of the materials that you were working with? In other well, words, did you want to see whether those materials had been originally exposed in the Oswald camera? Yes, we had one negative, and we also had the Morn shelf, which was a full frame negative print, and we distinguished certain identifiers or, or signature of the camera was found on the negative. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of JFK F381. Without objection, it may be entered into the record. Sergeant Kirk, is this the camera that was the subject of your analysis? Yes, sir, it is. How did the panel attempt to establish whether the negatives to the backyard picture had originally been exposed in Oswald's Imperial Reflex camera? There were two tests conducted, one by a scientist at the Rochester Institute of Technology and an independent examination conducted by myself here at Washington, D.C. and Metropolitan Police Headquarters. And when you conducted these tests, what specifically were you, were you looking for? What characteristics, if any, were you looking we for? We wanted to see if this photograph would produce the identifiers or the signature that was detected on the negative 133B and from 133A to Morn shell. You've made reference now to identifiers or signature. What specifically are you referring to? What, what do you mean when you use those terms? Most cameras, particularly inexpensive cameras that have been manufactured by molded plastic, have certain imperfections in them. And most, a lot of the imperfections are found around the film plane aperture, some call it, the part of the camera that the film lays against to be exposed. Now, people who manufacture these types of cameras do not worry too much about the frame age markings because they know that the type of person that would buy this camera would send the film to the corner drugstore and they know that the frame is going to be cropped off anyway to create the white borders that I referred to earlier. So, are, are frame edge markings one of the identifiers to which you were referring? We wanted to find out, and we asked the Rochester Institute of Technology to obtain two replica cameras like this. They obtained two cameras from the International Museum of Photography located at Eastman House in Rochester, New York and conducted tests for those cameras for us. Again, I'm not sure that you've answered my question. My specific question is, what identifiers, what do you call these identifiers, or these terms that you refer to as being the equivalent of a signature? One I take it is frame edge mark. That's correct, and scratches that are introduced into the image area itself by the fact the film is dragging across this plastic. So those would be camera scratch marks? Yes. Yeah. Sergeant Kirk, I would ask you to refer now to what's been marked for identification as JFK F-187. I move for the admission of this item, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, may be. Mr. Chairman, may I have a moment? Sure. Thank you. Sergeant, would you identify this exhibit Yes, sir. It's a photograph of the film plane of the Imperial Reflex Camera Identifiers Commission Exhibit 750. The orientation, this is a, the supply well of where the fresh film is inserted. The film is dragged across this film plane to a take-up reel at the top of the camera. Are you able to explain from that exhibit how camera scratch marks and frame edge marks are caused? Well, sir. More expensive cameras would have a stainless steel roller somewhat to protect the film from actually dragging across the surface. 
since this is, that does not have the case, the film is forced to be drug across this film plane, which would produce scratches. Also, you can see here, these are the ports where the plastic mold was attached, and when the mold is removed, it will bring certain fragments of the plastic away from it that is spilled out of the mold and makes an imperfect edge around the image area of the camera. At this time, I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be shown what has been marked for, for identification as JSK F-190. Sergeant Kirk, I would ask that you identify this exhibit and explain how the frame edge marks and camera scratch marks for Oswald's camera were established. Yes, sir. This is a, a test exposure that uh, we made off the roof of police headquarters uh, on August the 1st of this year. Uh, to our orientation, this is the new Labor Department building, of course, the Capitol building is in the background. We found, after uh, developing the negative and intentionally underexposing it so that we could see the frame edges, because this camera tend, tends to put more exposure in the center of the negative than around the edges. We found these signatures or identifiers around the frame edge markings and two distinctive scratches that regardless of how many times we ran film through the camera all showed up in exactly the same location. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of JFK F-187 and JFK F-190. Without objection, may be entered to the record at this point. Sergeant Kirk, why are frame edge marks and camera scratch marks useful in, de in determining whether a particular camera was used to take a particular picture? Well, throughout the years, it's been uh, pretty common knowledge in the forensic sciences that cameras do leave their signatures, especially in the inexpensive brands. Uh, years ago, uh, in World War II, when they were trying to identify what footage was shot by what cameras, laboratory technicians actually etched markings into the frame so they could identify one camera from another from another. Thank you, Sergeant. What effort, if any, was made to verify whether the frame edge marks and camera scratch marks produced by Oswald's camera were really unique? I addressed that area a while ago, and I, as I said, RIT scientists obtained two duplicate cameras from the International Museum of Photography located at at Eastman House in Rochester, and exposed some test negatives. I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be shown JFK F-191. Would you explain now, Sergeant Kirk, what type of comparison was made? Yes, sir. This is a, an exemplar of the type of negatives that were obtained from the two test cameras. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, that are obvious here that you have identifiers in approximately the same location as the Oswald camera, and that's because you have these three ports here for the plastic to go into the mold. But they are unique and different from this and the other camera, and indeed you will see more in this area because this camera had not been used much before it was placed into the museum. And as film drags across this camera, it would worn off some of the small pieces of plastic that were sticking out. Why does this exhibit have no numbers, whereas the one to the right of it does have numbers? I didn't want to confuse the committee by thinking I was trying to tell them that point one in this chart is identical with point one in that chart, because they are nowhere near similar. They're totally different than Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of JFK F-191. Without objection, so ordered. This time I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be shown JFK F-188 and F-397. Would you identify these two exhibits, Sergeant? Yes, so the enlargement on the top is a print made from the 133B negative, the only negative that we had to work from. 
And the photograph on the bottom is made from a copy photograph and enlarged from 133A to Morn Shell. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of these items. That objection may be entered into the record at this point. Thank you. Would you explain in some detail what analysis he did with these two exhibits? Yes, sir. We intentionally took the 133B uh, negative and withheld the exposure around the edge markings, as I said earlier, the camera tends to expose more in the center than in, uh, around the edges. And we, all, we wanted to be able to see if we can make up, pick up the same identifiers or the camera signature in 133B negative as was in our test negative that was exposed this year. And what was your result? The identifiers are there, all of them, and is it of our opinion, in my opinion, that the same camera that produced the test photograph this year produced the 133B backyard photograph. Of the backyard picture showing Oswald with the rifle, were only the, the Mornschild print and the 133B negative studied for frame edge marks? That's correct, sir. And why is that? Because those were the only material that we had that showed it from frame edge markings. Does the DeMornshell print have fewer identifying frame, mark, frame marks on it than the 133B negative? It does if you look at it with this type of lighting, which way it was photographed here for the exhibit today. Uh, items 2, 6, 7, 10, and 11 are visible if you look at uh, the photograph under reflected light. However, if you place this original print on a light box and look at it, from light backlit, light projected through the print. If you look at it using a small power magnifier, you'll be able to pick up the other identifiers that I put in here and put dashes beside it. Sergeant Kirk, I understand that the photography panel was able to study only the DeMornschild print and the 133B negative for frame edge marks. What materials were studied for the scratch mark analysis? All of the photographs. And why is that? because the scratches that we were looking for were in the part of the photograph that would not be cropped out in any of these areas. And we found the same scratch marks precisely the same distance apart in the same location in all the first generation prints. I'm sorry, Sergeant, I missed the last part of your Answer, would you state the results of your scratch mark analysis? We found the same scratch marks that were in the image area, such as identifiers 10 and 11, in all of the first generation prints that are on this flowchart. Sergeant, have you investigated the allegation that Oswald's Imperial Reflex camera was used only to take the backyard pictures of Oswald with the rifle? Yes, sir, I have. When did you do that? In August the 1st of this year. Exactly how did you go about examining this issue, Sergeant? I went to the National Archives and requested to see all of the photographs and all of the photographic negatives that were turned over to the Warren Commission and listed as that material that was taken during the execution of search warrants uh, from the personal effects of Lee and Marina Osborne. What did these photographs portray, Sergeant? Most were were family types snapshots, scenic, uh, uh, older child and a baby in a crib, uh, depicted uh, Mrs. Oswald and, her, and a child playing with a hose pipe, spraying the water on each other, uh, depicted uh, Mr. Oswald holding a ch an infant in his arms, family type photograph. I would ask that Sergeant Kirk be shown JFK F-189. Sergeant, would you identify that exhibit? Yes, sir. It's it's a from a, it's a first generation print made from a negative that uh, obtained from the archives, and it's from one of uh, approximately two dozen negatives that were on file at the archives. It's a photograph of a young child 
and the child has been identified by Marina Oswald Porter as being one of the children of she and Lee Harvey Oswald. Mr. Chairman, I move for the admission of this exhibit. That objection, it may be entered into the record at this point. Was this exhibit compared with any other materials or photographs exposed in Oswald's camera? Yes, sir, it was. And what was the result of that comparison? Comparison was made with the test negative, the 133B backyard photograph, the 133A Des Moines shell photograph, and they were found to contain the identical identifiers and scratch marks. And it is of our opinion that the same camera produced the baby picture. What was the panel's overall conclusions regarding the frame edge mark and, and, and camera scratch mark that it evaluated? That it's a reliable source of identification, and it is our opinion that the camera did indeed produce these photographs. When you say these photographs, you're referring to the backyard pictures? The backyard pictures, uh, the baby picture. Thank you. Sergeant Kirk, please resume your seat. I might state, Mr. Chairman, that the agenda for today has been changed somewhat. We have a witness here to give testimony on the issue of handwriting analysis. And for that reason, I have been asked to request that Sergeant Kirk and Mr. McKamey that we defer the remainder of their testimony until tomorrow so that the handwriting expert can testify today. He informs us that he has to appear in court tomorrow and would not be available to be here tomorrow. Sergeant Kirk, Mr. McKamey, would you be available tomorrow? Yes, sir. Mr. Kirk, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would also like to request that JFK F-188 and F-397 be admitted into the record. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you.